it's Stephen Bedard, and I hope that you've been checking out my website, stephenjbedard.com, and I hope that you have subscribed to this YouTube channel as well. Now, five years and two days ago, I wrote a blog post that at the time I had no idea would be one of the most popular blog posts on my blog. And it was on the differences between Samuel and Kings versus Chronicles. Now, even as I say that, you might think, well, that doesn't sound very exciting at all. And yet I've been amazed over the past five years how many times people have come to that post looking for those answers. And it is regularly the most popular post and at the very least is in the top five. And I'm sure that if you go to my, uh, my website, stephenjbedard.com, which right now would be a great time to go and check out that website, it is likely in the top five, which you'll see in the sidebar. And I find it very interesting uh, that people would be curious about the relationship uh, between these books. And I guess in some ways it makes sense. If you're interested in the Bible and you're taking a look at the Old Testament, you have these collections of books. So we have uh, First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings, and they, they give the, the, the certain history of uh, Israel and Judah. And then right afterwards in our English Bibles, we have First and Second Chronicles, which seems to go over the same material. Why do we have that? What is going on? What is the point of having all of those books and having all of that repetition. So we're actually going to take a look at uh, what the difference is between uh, these collections of books. And so I'm just going to refer to uh, Samuel and Kings and Chronicles. We'll leave the one and two out of there because uh, uh, originally they were just their own books and they're only divided up for the, the length of scrolls. But uh, we're just going to refer to that. So what is the difference between Samuel and Kings and Chronicles? Well, first of all, let's start with what uh, is similar. They are covering the, the same general uh, range of history. Now, there is some difference uh, because Chronicles is written afterwards, but it does cover that, uh, that same area um, from the, the time of uh, King Saul right on to the, the last kings of Judah. And so because of that, there are, are a lot of things in common. And that's why some people, when they're reading through it, they might even skip over Chronicles thinking, well, this is kind of boring. I just read all of this stuff. Uh, but as we're going to see, they're not actually the same thing. There are differences between them. And uh, if you're interested, you can go and check out details in uh, the notes for this video. I will have a link to that blog post. But we're going to take a look at some of the things that uh, are different between them. So the first difference we're going to look at is the fact that they appear in two different sections of the Old Testament. You're thinking, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Chronicles appears right after Kings. Yes, in our English Bibles, uh, in our Christian Old Testaments, they do. But in the Jewish Bible or the Hebrew Bible, they don't actually appear in the same sections at all. The uh, Hebrew Bible is divided into three sections, and that is uh, the law, the prophets, and the writings. So uh, the law is exactly what we would think. It's the, uh, the first five books of uh, our Old Testament, uh, the books of Moses. Those are the, the law. Uh, but what are the prophets may surprise people because we have a certain idea of what prophets are. And they actually divide up the prophets into the former prophets and the latter prophets. And the former prophets would include uh, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. Now you might not think of them as being prophetic. But that is perhaps more our limited understanding of what prophecy is. And so uh, the Hebrews would have seen uh, prophecy being closely included into history. And so those are the, the, uh, the former prophets. And then the latter prophets are Isaiah, 
uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Twelve. So what we have is the, the minor prophets. They're all collected into one book called the Twelve. And then we have the writings, which are basically everything else. And the final books of the writings are chronicles. So uh, in our Christian Old Testament, our final book in our uh, Old Testament is Malachi. But in the Hebrew Bible, the final book is actually Second Chronicles. So you see that the, uh, the order is quite a bit different. And, uh, and we have Samuel and Kings in the section of the prophets. And we have Chronicles in the section of the writings. And probably in the development of the, uh, the Hebrew canon, uh, the law and the prophets were probably uh, compiled first. They were probably accepted as being canonical first. And then the writings were a little bit later. And so, In fact, some people uh, would say that the writings really weren't finally um, understood uh, as to exactly which books were going to be in there. The canon wasn't finalized. Uh, until near the end of the first century AD. So after the time of Jesus is when the writings were uh, finally uh, accepted as to which books were included. Now there's some controversy over that, but the fact is it definitely was after the time of the prophets. So that is one difference. They're in different sections of the Bible, but there are other section, other differences as well. Uh, so I mentioned uh, one is the uh, difference in time. The uh, Book of Kings ends at the beginning of the exile. Uh, the exile has just started. That's when the, the book is written. And so it only goes to that section. Whereas Chronicles actually goes uh, to the end of the exile and the proclamation that the Jews are allowed to go back to to Israel. So that is another difference between them. But there's a, a different um, distinction between Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles that many people don't realize. And that is the fact that uh, Chronicles seems to clean up the um, the reputations of some of these kings. And, and I should actually uh, include another difference there, that um, in Samuel and Kings, we're dealing with the kings of Israel and Judah, whereas Chronicles really is only interested in the kings of Judah. Now, the kings of Israel do appear, but only as they are directly interacting with the kings of Judah. So it's specifically for um, the kings of Judah, which makes sense with what I just said in terms of the, the dating, because uh, it's not Israel that comes back after the exile. It is Judah that comes back. Jews are people from the tribe of Judah. So Jew and Judean uh, mean the same thing. In fact, uh, in Greek, they're spelled exactly the same. So uh, that is something that we need to keep in mind. And of those Jewish kings, uh, as I said, uh, Chronicles seems to clean up their reputation somewhat. And so uh, an example for that would be uh, that of King David. And of course, King David is so important for all of biblical history, whether Old Testament or New Testament. But uh, if you look at his story in, uh, in Samuel Kings, you see him uh, doing some great things, but also doing some bad things. And the most obvious bad thing is what he did with Bathsheba and then covering that up with the uh, the killing of Uriah. So he commits adultery and murder and uh, it is a, a terrible, terrible thing. But when we go to Chronicles, in fact, you can look in 1 Chronicles chapter 20, you'll see exactly where that story should be. So you can look at the things that happened before, the things that happened afterwards, you can pinpoint to the verse where it should be, and yet the whole story of uh, Bathsheba and Uriah is completely left out. I'm going to uh, give you another example. Uh, one is uh, King Manasseh, and he was uh, a king of Judah, and uh, he wasn't a, a very good king. He did a, a lot of bad things. In fact, I'm going to read to you 
uh, the summary of his reign as found in 2 Kings chapter 21, verses uh, 16 to 18. Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood until he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, besides the sin that he caused Judah to sin, so that they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, all that he did, and the sin that he committed, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Manasseh slept with his ancestors and was buried in the garden of his house, in the garden of Uzzah. His son Ammon succeeded him. So there's nothing good there. There's nothing good about Manasseh at all. Now here is the summary of Manasseh's reign from Second Chronicles 33, verses 18 to 20. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, these are in the annals of the kings of Israel, his prayer and how God received his entreaty, all his sin and his faithlessness, the sites in which he built high places and set up the sacred poles, and the images before he humbled himself, these are written in the records of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his ancestors, and they buried him in his house. His son Ammon succeeded him. Do you see the difference there? It has a positive aspect to his story. In fact, just a, a few verses beforehand, it talks about how Manasseh uh, humbled himself and he prayed a, a prayer uh, of repentance and God restored him. In fact, in the Apocrypha, uh, later on, someone um, uses their imagination to come up with what that prayer might have looked like. But that prayer is not mentioned at all in Kings, but it is found in Chronicles. And so in general, as we go through, and it, it, this has to do with other kings as well, it includes uh, King Solomon and, and many others, uh, you'll find a very much more positive portrayal of the kings of Judah than what you find in Kings, uh, in Samuel and Kings. And we have to ask, well, why is that? What is going on there? Is that an error in the Bible? Well, I don't think that's an error in the Bible at all. The fact is, uh, Samuel and Kings are written for one purpose, and Chronicles is written for another. So, uh, Samuel and Kings is written as Judah is going into exile. And it's a time of repentance. It's a time when people should be uh, aware of their own sinfulness. It is uh, an event that's portrayed as being because of the unfaithfulness of the people of God. And so the author of those books describes the, um, the story of the kings uh, in all their ugliness, in all their messiness, so that the, the people of Judah are reminded of the consequences of sin. Whereas Chronicles is written for a people who are regathering. They're coming back to the Promised Land. They're coming back to Jerusalem and the, the surrounding area in Judah. And what those people need to know is not so much uh, all the, the messiness of their story. Uh, they're not uh, needing to be reminded about how uh, their leaders uh, committed so many terrible things. What they need is encouragement. They need to be reminded that God is at work uh, in their people and that God is at work in their leaders as well. And so uh, the, the goal for the writer of Chronicles is completely different. So you can see why uh, that author would, would focus more on the positive. Uh, it's not contradicting what happened before. It's not saying that David didn't do anything bad. Uh, it is simply saying that, uh, that we're going to focus on the positive here because this is a, a crucial time in Judah's history. They're trying to regather. They're trying to build themselves up again. They're trying to become a nation again, and they need to focus on the positive. And the truth is, there are times that we, uh, we need to be challenged with the negative of our past, and there are times that we need to be encouraged by the positive. And that's what the, the difference is between uh, Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. So I hope that helps you in answering that question. As I said, I will leave the, the link to that blog post 
uh, in the uh, description for this video and I hope that you check it out and uh, come and check me out at uh, stephenjbedard.com and make sure to um, subscribe to this channel. Thank you and God bless.